so class 7 uh, as you know that uh, yesterday we have started with the chapter sermon at banaras so what does sermon at banaras refers to it refers to the great sermon which was delivered by the great saint mahatma buddh so a bit of background we have also read and and you can say after getting married when he wanted to seek enlightenment he wanted to get enlightenment he has gone he has left his house and he has gone to forest to jungles and he sat under a peepal tree for seven days and after seven days he got enlightened and he named that tree as bodhi tree okay so why it was called as bodhi tree because it has provided him some wisdom so this is the reason why it has been called as bodhi tree so the first sermon was delivered by mahatma buddh at banaras at the banks of holy ganga and ultimately he has delivered his first sermon there which is preserved there so now next afterwards we are going to read about that sermon that how he has delivered this sermon and what was that sermon <coughs> so here goes it reflects the buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering so inscrutable means that we cannot we you can say understood okay so this we have even read yesterday okay so we have read it yesterday that about what sermon he was talking about so next that human beings their life is always full of suffering human beings they always feel suffering and it is just because of this suffering we should never think that our life has come to an end but we should rather take it as a new move to our new further life so kisa got me had only one son so here goes the story very interesting one it is kisa got me the name of a lady she had only one son and he died in her grief she carried the dead child to all her neighbors asking them for medicine and the people said she has lost her senses and the boy is dead so kita kisa got me she had only one son so being his only one son he was so attached to his son and when he died in her grief she has taken that child and to all the neighbors and they, she told them to make her child alive and asking them for medicine she knew that she did not you can say believe this fact that he was dead she thought that he is suffering from some problem as he is a young child so she asked for medicine and people said she has lost her senses the boy is dead and people felt that she has lost her senses she has gone mad this is the reason why she is asking medicine for a dead boy so she thought they thought that she has gone mad because the boy is dead atlan kisa got me met a man who replied to her request i cannot give the i cannot give d means i cannot give him the medicine for d child means for your child but i know a physician who can now she moved from far and off places she moved from one place to another then there she met a man who told him yes if your son is dead i could not help you out i could not give you medicine but but i know a physician who can cure it and who can help you out and the girl said pray tell me sir who is it and the man replied go to sakya muni the buddha and she said please please tell me please kindly tell me that who is the man who would revive my son back to senses and he said go to sakya muni buddha means he has sent her to buddha now kisa got me repaired to the buddha and cried lord and master give me the medicine that will cure my boy she repaired means she went to and requested to buddha with her folded hands in this manner and told oh my lord my master please give me some medicine that would be quite helpful for my son and that would cure my boy the buddha answered i want a handful of mustard seed buddha without saying anything he said bring a hand means bring a hand full of mustard seeds and when the girl in her joy promised to procure means to produce it buddha added the mustard seed must be taken from a house where no one has lost a child husband parent or friend so he said 
so she said that bring a handful of mustard seeds the girl was very happy that she has to bring a handful of mustard seeds and my son would be cured so she was ready to bring those mustard seeds but at that time buddha added he told that girl remember remember that you will bring those mustard seeds but remember you should bring those mustard seeds from the house of a from the house of a person where no child would be dead or a husband no parent or no friend it means that death had never happened to that house no one had witnessed any kind of death but you know is this possibility if not in my relations someone must be dead in the far off relations far away relations and he said that you have to bring those mustard seeds <coughs> from a house where no one is dead who were kisa got me now went from house to house and people pitied her and said here is mustard seed take it but when she asked did a son or a daughter a father a mother die in your family they answered her alas the living are few but the dead are many so now she moved from one door to another people felt bad for her condition that she is asking just for a handful of mustard so people have feeling pity for her they were giving her that mustard those mustard seeds and when she took those mustard seeds in her hand she asked those people is there any death in the family either your mother your father your friend or anybody son or daughter in the family now people said alas the living are few with, with very sad heart we want to tell you that that there are very few people in our family who are living but there are many deaths in our families do not remind us of our deepest grief please by talking about these don't remind us of those deep grief that sadness that we are suffering from please don't make us remind that suffering and there was no house but some beloved one had died in it and finally while going from door to door she did not find a house where nobody is dead because in every house either one person or the other one is dead either man either father either the main you can say main head of the family either one is dead kisa gautami became weary and hopeless weary means she was tired she was hopeless that i am not able to find any house where no one is dead and she sat down at the wayside watching the lights of the city as they flickered flickered means they were moving sometimes dim sometimes bright you must have seen the light of a diya or you can say the earthen lamp it flickers okay light of a candle it flickers it is not steady sometimes it it you can say it flickers means it is light it is dim and at the other moment it is quite dark so at last the darkness of the night reigned everywhere rain means it ruled everywhere so finally kisa got me she was tired she was hopeless that she is not going to find <coughs> this kind of house where no one is dead so finally on her way side means on her way she sat and she was just watching the lights of the city because this was a time when there was no electricity and people used to burn earthen lamps or diyas or lamps in order to light their houses at night at last so when she was looking at those lights they were flickering they were not steady sometimes dark sometimes dim finally the entire city was covered with darkness and she considered the fate of men that their lives flicker up and are extinguished again and she thought to herself so then when she was looking at those lights then she has made a comparison of her life to those of you can say these lights she thought that this is actually the fate of men this is actually the destiny of men human beings that their lives they flicker it means their life is not steady sometimes happiness sometimes sadness and sometimes you can say mixture of feelings they have to face 
and finally they are extinguished extinguished means finally this light of life it comes to an end it brings an end and this soul it departs from the body leaving only the corpse that is left then she thought to herself how selfish am i in my grief death is common to all and yet in this valley of desolation means sadness death is common to all and yet in this valley of desolation there is a path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness so then while at that time the you can say reality of light dawned upon her mind she came to know about the reality of light what she has come to know she thought that really she was really very selfish because she was thinking that why her son was dead she should know that death is common to all death is a natural phenomena we can never avoid it we can never think or we can never bring an end to death because death is one of the part of life if anything that has taken birth at this in this world and the thing it has to be dead so she says that there is a <coughs> path that leads him to immortality means man is mortal mortal means that perishes that dies away but some people they are immortal they are remembered for generations she thinks that there is a path to immortality a person can become become immortal how if he will surrender or if he will leave away all his selfishness but is this possible no our life is such that we always suffer from one or other kind of selfish motives even in our smallest acts we show selfish nature and because of this day by day we are becoming more selfish and this is always so decreasing our chances to be mortal sorry to be immortal because we are mortal ones so then she has realized that if a person leaves his selfish motives aside only then he will be immortal now the buddha said life of mortals in this world is troubled and brief and combined with pain so now buddha has told her an important lesson what that life of mortals who are mortals here human beings that life of mortals life of all human beings who are prone to death who will be dead after going through a circle of life after passing some years they will be dead it is troubled and brief it is troubled means there are many pains many sufferings they have many much worries and which they have to pass through and it is brief it is very short it's not so long and it is always combined with pain it means that there is a lot of pain in our lives okay so it means what buddha want to say that our life is completely full of sufferings so now now buddha said that life of mortals life of mortals it is of course full of sufferings we have lot of suffering in our lives we suffer from this kind of pain their life is full of pain they suffer a lot we never think that it is an easy go right but it is a topsy turvy right in which sometime rise sometime falls and it is not going steady lot of things that we have to face in our lives for their for their one minute for their there is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying and after reaching old age there is death of such a nature of such a nature are living beings now he said that there is no way out that there is no way out that we can avoid the, that we can avoid death because death is inevitable we can never avoid death death is a part and parcel of our lives human beings those who are born they are of this nature that whenever they are born on this earth they definitely have to face death because they could never avoid dying dying is a part of life 
and after reaching an old age like a fruit ripens when it fruit ripens it falls from the tree what makes it fall it's a natural process similarly death is also a natural process it means that whenever human beings they are taking birth they have to die this is their nature yes the same example giving further as ripe fruits are early in danger of falling so mortals when born are always in danger of death so like a fruit which is ripened what <coughs> what it will what will happen to that fruit it will definitely fall down to the ground because it's his nature similarly human beings they also have this kind of nature that when they are born they will definitely be dead there will definitely be death of human beings and of course we can never deny this fact as all earthen vessels made by potter end in being broken so is the life of mortal so he has made another comparison he has made another comparison to that of you can say to that of you can say earthen vessels suppose an earthen vessel okay whatever shape it is ultimately what will be its destiny it will end in breaking then it will be thrown into the earth and into the soil out of which it has been produced similarly human beings out of soil they emerge and into the soil they submerge there they also you can say <coughs> they die this is of course the reality of mortals that mortals they end in this kind of destiny we can never deny this fact that mortals they will definitely end their life in death only this is the only possible way out for them both young and adult both those who are fools and those who are wise all fall into the power of death and all are subject to death the poet is saying that we can never deny this fact that death is discriminating in its nature no it's never partial in its nature because it is same the same rule is applicable even for rich and same is applicable for poor it means that nature is never discriminating it is always you can say just it is always doing accurate justice with all it is only we human beings who have created these you can say boundaries we, we, it is only we human beings who have created these kind of you can say differences but death and the rule of nature it is of course same for all it is same for death is death is afflicted to both rich and poor even if poor they will attain the age of maturity and even rich who have attained the age of maturity they will both fall to death similarly death never discriminates between fool as well as that of you can say wise people both will be afflicted to death at the same time when their time comes so in this paragraph what <coughs> is being <coughs> sorry what is being delivered is that that death is inevitable we cannot deny death death is a part of our life it is same for all for rich and poor and all the human beings that have taken birth they will definitely come to an end of course it is painful of course it is painful for the person also who is leaving this world and of course it is painful for the persons who are so deeply attached with that person oh of those who overcome by death depart from life a father cannot save his son nor kinsman their relation kinsman means the person's relatives mark while relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply one by one mortals are carried off like an ox that is led to the slaughter hmm. of those who overcome by death depart from life so now those persons who overcome death they always go away from the circle of life this we know okay to have moksha okay it means that those who have overcome this circle of life they will definitely be far far away 
from this worldly life. Their souls will always be there in this world. Like a father, a father can never save his son from being dead. Similarly, nor kinsman, nor any relationship will save anyone from being departed. Everything will be there in this world and everything is doomed to be dead. Mark, Mark means remember. When relatives, they are lamenting because when anyone is dead in the family, what happens that the persons in the family, they lament, they cry a lot. They remember the good deeds of the person who has left this world, who has gone for his heavenly abode, who has gone for his heavenly journey. But what Buddha is saying, remember, we are lamenting, but next day it will be our turn to go and to leave this world. It is only we he have it is only we who have to leave this world and go for ever. So the world is afflicted with death and decay, like an ox that is led to the slaughter. Slaughter means the person who is responsible for killing an ox, okay, to sell it for meat, like we are going to be sold in this market. Okay. So so the world is afflicted with death and decay, means this world what it is actually made up of. It is actually made up of death and decay. Means whatever is produced, it will definitely be dead. And after death, what happens? Decaying process will start because we emerge, we are matter and matter can only be transformed from one form to another. It can never be produced and can never be destroyed. So decaying process means like that the body will decay. Okay, it will be part of that, you can say, soil only from which we have emerged out. And therefore, the wise do not grieve knowing the terms of the world. So the wise men, they never feel sad. They never grieve because they know the rules of world, that this death is, of course, the rule of world. And what we have to do, we have to go through this rule, we will never avoid this kind of rule as death is inevitable. So by giving examples in the first paragraph, the <coughs> writer, he is delivering to us that death is a part of our life. So what important message that he is delivering to us? Okay. It means that what does this sermon at Banaras it refers to? It refers to the reality of life. That death, that, that death is inevitable. It will happen to both rich, poor, false and wise alike. All are prone to death. All will be afflicted to death. Death will be a part of their lives. And everyone, everyone who is born in this world, he is prone to danger. He will definitely face one or the other kind of danger. And it is just because of this kind of danger that a person always feel that he's like a fruit. He should feel himself like a fruit. When a fruit is ripened, it will fall down from, his, from its tree and will ultimately, and will ultimately what will happen, be a part. It will be consumed and finally the journey of a fruit is over. See the journey of fruit from where it starts. It starts from a seed. Seed will give rise to a new plant. New plant will then become a tree. At a particular stage of life, it will start bearing the fruits. So when the fruits are being produced over at, <coughs> you can say, they are being produced over by the tree, the fruit, what happened? The fruit falls down from the tree to spread more seeds, and that fruit, which is which has been produced by a tree, again it is dead. So, similarly, the human beings that whether we have taken birth on this earth, but still after some time we will be dead. It is not a case with one person or one you can say human being. It, of course, it is a part of life of everyone, everyone who has who has taken birth here will definitely die. And because of this, they will come, they will bring an end to their lives. So this entire world, what it is made up of, it is made up of 
made up of death and decay we will never deny this fact we will never overlook this fact of life and we will never close our eyes to see death because because death will definitely take you back whether you are sleeping whether you will be awake whether you will be aware and he is also giving an important lesson to the relatives kinsmen that they we can never save their dear ones from being dead they will definitely be dead they will be taken away but the thing is that we have to save we have to spend our life in a wise manner as wise men never lament they never grieve because they know the terms of the world okay so now one paragraph is left this we will continue tomorrow